Ron Owens, KGO Radio. Okay, so on Sunday, I'm reading the Chronicle, and there's just this superb article by David Crane. And I say, who's this guy? Well, he's a Democrat, but he was an advisor to Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger. He lectures on public policy at Stanford, and he's on the UC Board of Regents. So the guy seems to know what he's talking about. And we're talking about what's going on not just in Madison, Wisconsin, but theoretically Ohio, Indiana, every state in the Union, if it keeps going the way it's going. Let me start with the classic quote, and that is, the process of collective bargaining, as usually understood, cannot be transplanted into the public service. The reason is, a strike of public employees manifests nothing less than an intent on their part to obstruct the operations of government until their demands are satisfied, and such action looks towards the paralysis of government by those who have sworn to support it. That's unthinkable. That's intolerable. And that was not from a guy in the Tea Party. That was from Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Good morning there, David. Good morning, Ron. Nice to be here. The, the, you, I told you when I just met you that the, what got me in the article is that's exactly what I've been trying to say during the course of the Madison discussion, that there's a huge distinction between public unions and private unions. Uh, there is, and I've actually been surprised uh, at how... Uh, poorly understood that distinction is and how little it's being discussed. My wife and I, for example, are regular watchers of the John Stewart show and the Stephen Colbert show every night. And we're big fans. And I have been very surprised, for example, that John Stewart, who's very smart, has not made the distinction between public employee collective bargaining and private employee collective bargaining. Uh, but, you you know, you, of course, you see it. David Brooks in The New York Times understands the distinction, and a, and a few others do. But, but explain the distinction for those who don't. Yeah. In in, in the private sector, and I, uh, full disclosure, I'm a supporter of collective bargaining. Mm-hmm. I think it's absolutely necessary. Well, full in disclosure, the, I'm in a union. Oh, there we go. That's right. great. Yeah. Uh, I think collective bargaining is absolutely necessary to equalize negotiating power between the employer and the employee. So when collective bargaining was was first started with the National Labor Relations Act in the 1930s, if an employee simply asked for a raise or a change in working conditions, they were threatened with dismissal. Uh, So what collective bargaining did is give them uh, equal negotiating power with the employer. And it works wonderfully, in my view, in that world. They, They can decide on their own whether they want to collectivize. And then when they negotiate, they're not negotiating with themselves. Management represents shareholders. Union leaders represent labor. There's a very there's a natural tension there, and one doesn't influence the other. There's a balance. There's a balance, and in the public sector, it's quite different. Where two factors are different. One, in the public sector, government employees ha- generally have civil service protections. So in California, those protections were granted in 1913, and they're effectively property like rights. It's very after a short probation period. Uh, it's virtually impossible to dismiss a state employee, right. no matter what they do, unless there's insubordination, et cetera, et cetera. Those rights existed already. So what happens when you get collective bargaining rights on top of that is you're not giving them equal rights with their fellow citizens in the society or even equal negotiating leverage with their employer. You're giving them super rights. And it's compounded by the fact that once they collectivize, and they can pool their contributions, they can control management. So instead of politicians, and think about the state of California, there are only 120 legislators representing a state of 38 million people, and there are like 21 bargaining units that they negotiate with. Those legislators are supposed to be representing the interests of the taxpayers and the citizens. But because labor, in that case, can influence management, they start representing labor instead of Citizens and well, they just want to get reelected, and in order to get reelected, you have to have, you have to be popular. And if more money is coming in from unions, obviously you're going to take that point of view. What makes it unfair is how do you sit at a table and negotiate under those circumstances? There's no negotiation. I think that's the case, and I, I don't think it works in a world where the governor and the state legislature determine the compensation of the people that elect them. Mm-hmm. They shouldn't have those rights. And I, when we talk about how did we get to this point, it is because of that. I mean, it's just an uneven uneven battle that's going on right now. So consequently, public unions are getting more and more and more in pensions. And as a consequence, we're being overloaded. Now we're at a point where we can't have our regular public services because of benefits that we have, in essence, given away simply because politicians wanted to get elected. Yeah, but we should clarify this because there's, there's a big problem here where public employees are being unfairly Villainized. I'm not saying that you just did that, but people talk about the height, the size. I, of I villainized. The I villainized the union, and I villainized the politicians but, that went along with it. That's y- what I did. 
it, to me, it's it's only the politicians that should be villainized because the union is just doing what everybody would do when that's the case when they have those rights. People in the corporate world always exercise their rights to the right. fullest extent. Here, what happens is, yeah, I mean, just uh, again, local local math is different than state math, but at the state level. The average pension earned by a state employee who retired in 2010 is less than $40,000 a year. Now, that's that's a great figure for the rest of your life and inflation protected, but it's hardly extravagant. The problem is politicians made promises to make those payments and on top of that, retiree health care payments and didn't fund them. Then, and so it's exactly well, because we thought it would just keep going forever and ever, ever. The boom that we had in California would never stop. Well, in the case of retiree health care, they don't even prefund those. So what you're talking about is pensions there. Yeah. Retiree health care, which this year will cost the state of California four billion dollars, isn't prefunded at all. It's just the consequence of a promise that a politician made in order to curry favor and get elected. So I blame the politician. All right. So you blame the politicians. But. The the key to it also, I, I we did an hour on why is it that not everybody in a, in a in a city like this, San Francisco, you would think a totally union city, everybody be on the side of the unions, and there is a real disagreement here. There are a lot of people who, like me, have problems with taking the union point of view, and one of the things I said, and you alluded to it before, as a regent on the board of uh, uh, California, U University of California, uh, one of the things that got to me is we have all in whatever profession <clears throat> we've been in worked with people who used the union as a shield. In other words, they didn't want to work. You couldn't fire them. You couldn't do anything with them. It breeds resentment. And you get to a point where you're saying, you know, I'm working really hard. This guy is not. There's an unfairness about it. And I think that's the first little crack in people's thinking, well, maybe unions aren't all perfect. I've seen some of that from my perspective where I've seen the most uh, anger is, is on the progressive Democratic side, where, for example, at the state level, what happens is when you have all these unfunded promises, they're debt. And that debt, though, is contractual and has to be paid. So this year, the state of California will spend $7 billion on retirement benefits. That $7 billion is coming out of higher education, health and human services, and all the other sorts of discretionary programs that need to be invaded because this $7 billion is owed. So, you know, at the local level, you see parking tickets go up. You see parks and rec get less money. You see gardeners laid off. Where public employees will start to see this as well, as there'll be fewer of them hired, and their own benefits going forward will be lowered. Again, because people didn't fund these promises when they were made. We have to keep the promises unless we go bankrupt, and states cannot go bankrupt. That's correct. And and uh, the state of California, for example, uh, none of these states, in my view, will ever go bankrupt. There's not a bankruptcy risk. So, for example, at the state level, you have $90 billion of revenue, even in a year like this, which isn't that great. Mm-hmm. You only have $50 billion worth of mandatory payments for K through 14 education under Prop 98 and debt service and retirement benefit payments. The rest of it is all discretionary for higher ed, corrections, health and human services. That's why they're the ones that take it on the chin when these right, these costs increase. By the way, if I could just point out one other thing, this is not always, this is not true of every public employee. So for example, at the University of California, those employees do not have civil service protections and they can't give contributions to the people that they enter contracts into because it's the regents that enter into those contracts with them. So in that case, collective the bargaining is responsible fine. to? Uh, the regents are, are, are uh, there are 26 of them. and uh, they, you, you being know, one of them. I'm one of them. So who's, who are you responsible to? To the, the University of California system. So we're responsible for securing the future of the University of California system. So it's not as if, uh, in that case, they shouldn't have collective bargaining rights. In my view, they should. It's only in the case where you can control the people that you're entering contracts. We're going to talk a little bit about this concept of union busting, which Governor Walker brings up as far as what's going on in Madison, Wisconsin. We'll also open the lines. 808-0810 is the number. 808-0810. Feel free to jump into it. Private sector, public sector. There's a difference when it comes to unions. Ron Owens, KGO 1012. Opera San Jose presents a preview of its 2011-2012 season. The Season of Legends on Saturday, March 5th at the new Barbara Lee Milpitas Senior Center. This event begins at 2 p.m. and features members of the Opera San Jose resident company singing arias, duets, and ensembles from operas including Leon Cavallo's Pagliacci, Verdi's La Traviata, and Gounod's Faust. 
Following the vocal preview, Opera San Jose General Manager Larry Hancock will discuss the composers and works and take questions from the audience. Join Opera San Jose Saturday, March 5th at 2 p.m. at the new Barbara Lee Milpitas Senior Center, free and open to the public at 40 North Milpitas Boulevard in Milpitas. The new Milpitas Senior Center offers programming to those 50 and older, including classes, trips, socials, and the Opera San Jose season preview this March 5th at 2 p.m. Seating is limited. For details, call 408 437 This program's been made possible in part through a grant from the City of Milpitas. If you're thinking about switching to a Tempur-Pedic mattress, there are two things you need to know. First, Tempur-Pedic is the most highly recommended bed in America. And second, right now at Mattress Discounters, when you purchase a Tempur-Pedic, you get free delivery and two free Tempur-Pedic pillows. Plus, you always get Mattress Discounters' lowest price or its free guarantee. But this offer ends soon at Mattress Discounters. Mattress Discounters! Hey, if you like to ski or snowboard, then you need to text KGO Ski to 68255 for powder alerts, the latest weather conditions, and more. You can set up your own personalized alert to come as often as you'd like and even choose your favorite resorts like Heavenly, Kirkwood, Squaw Valley, Alpine Meadows, North Star, and Mammoth. Text KGO Ski to 68255 now. Standard text messaging rate supply. Ski alerts are brought to you by Amici's East Coast Pizzeria at the Nut Tree in Vacaville. For more information, visit KGORadio.com. Push, click, tap. All simple actions and all about to change your business. You're an entrepreneur and ready to grow. You're ready for Valpac. So push the envelope. Click with your customers. Tap into your market. All with Valpac. Get Valpac working for you with our full suite of services. In the mail, online, on the phone. Visit Valpac.com or call 1-800-4-VALPAK today and see results tomorrow. Well, you knew it was bound to happen. A barrel of oil has now surpassed the $100 mark. Do you want to talk about it? We will. On KGOAM, San Francisco, San Jose, Oakland. News Talk 810. McDonald's Premium Roast Coffee in any size, just a dollar all day. Whether you need a pick-me-up, a prop-me-up, or a big old cup of wake-me-up, any size McDonald's Premium Roast Coffee is just one dollar. Limited time only, prices and participation may vary. Let's get something out in the open right off the bat. The California Interscholastic Federation has mandated new high school bat standards this year. That's why all California Sports Authority stores have a huge selection of BB Corps approved bats, starting at $39.99. From Easton, DeMarini, Louisville Slugger, and more. And they're backed by our low price guarantee. Time to upgrade their bats so they can play ball. Sports Authority. All things sporting good. Highly skilled cardiologists make Sequoia Hospital's Heart and Vascular Institute one of the predominant referral centers for AFib treatment. Sequoia has performed more than 1,200 AFib ablations, has one of the best cure rates, and is among the highest volume AFib ablation centers on the West Coast. We're easy to reach on the San Francisco Peninsula, so please learn more at sequoiahearts.com. That's sequoiahearts.com. Is your mortgage rate higher than 3.875% APR? Or even worse, are you stuck in an adjustable rate mortgage that gets more expensive each month? If so, it's time to call Fremont Bank. Whether you're looking to refinance, purchase a new home, or consolidate debt, Fremont Bank can help. We offer fixed rate mortgages with no closing cost options, great customer service, and a quick and easy application process. Join the growing group of satisfied Bay Area homeowners who have turned to Fremont Bank for their mortgage needs. So what are you waiting for? Call 866 341 refi. If your rate is higher than 3.875% APR or is about to adjust, you owe it to yourself to call today. Isn't it about time you gave Fremont Bank a try? Hurry before this rate of 3.875% APR disappears. Call 866 341 refi. That's 866 341 REFI. Restrictions apply. Application fee required. Call for additional cost details. APR effective 31 2011. Subject to change without notice. Equal housing lender. Member FDIC. Hey, it's Gil Gross here, coming up on my four-year anniversary of LASIK with Harvard MD and 49ers eye doctor, Dr. Scott Hiver. You know, I still remember that amazing day when after just a few short minutes, Dr. Hiver had corrected my vision, finally putting an end to my 30-year dependency on glasses and contact lenses. So what about you? 
I mean, is it a time you finally give yourself a break after all these years? Then see Dr. Scott Hyber now, because he's offering the all-new, all-laser LASIK. It is a safer and more precise way to fix your distance vision. And now, if you have money in your company's Flex Medical Spending Plan... You can use tax-free dollars on all-laser LASIK, save yourself a whole bunch of money, to get your free all-laser LASIK evaluation with Dr. Hiver at his daily city, Santa Clara, or San Ramon office. Just call 800-454-2747. That's 800-454-2747. Or go to scotthiver.com. That's S-C-O-T-T-H-Y-V as in vision, E-R.com. Arthritis alert. Arthritis alert. Now, there's a pain-killing cream that reduces arthritis pain on contact. It's called Pain Buster 2. Pain Buster 2 has a rare combination of pain-killing powerhouses to provide deep, penetrating heat to joints and muscles that need it most to help relieve stiffness and improve mobility. Arthritis pain sufferers will be amazed at the way Pain Buster 2 could help them live normal and active lives. Arthritis alert. Arthritis alert. Pain Buster 2 is now available at most drug, food, and super center stores. To the phones in a minute. First, Ed Baxter, latest in news. Okay, Ron, thank you. Steve Jobs uh, is in San Francisco, is at the Apple event. Uh, he said that uh, he walked in, AP says, and I'm following AP and also a live blog from inside, says that he looked frail wearing a signature black mock turtleneck blue jeans and wire rim glasses. Uh, he said, we've been working on this product for a while. I just didn't want to miss today. Right now, apparently, he's uh, telling the gathered throng that uh, that other Apple products have been doing exceptionally well, but that he has something exciting to announce. And, of course, everybody's expecting that that will be the iPad 2. Uh, the conjecture has been that we'll have a camera front and back will be lighter and sleeker. Two U.S. airmen are dead. A gunman opened fire. Air Force personnel on a bus outside the airport in Frankfurt, Germany. Authorities say two other airmen were wounded. The opponents of Muammar Gaddafi are still in control of a key oil installation on Libya's coast after an attack by Gaddafi loyalists who are hoping to capture it. All right, traffic. Marin County, again, uh, saying expect long delays still. This is a problem that has been going on for most of the morning. It was a big rig that uh, dumped, uh, you know, dumped its load. 101 southbound between Novato and uh, the dumps and Redwood Sanitary Landfill and Freitas Parkway expecting long delays still in. Traffic remains very, very heavy and slow. That again, Marin County southbound headed towards San Francisco. Benicia, 780 eastbound before 680, an accident there. Palo Alto, 101 northbound ramp to Embarcadero Road, Oregon Expressway, an accident there. Two separate accidents are being cleared. May still be some debris on the off-ramp in Pinole. 80 westbound before Appian Way, an accident there on the right shoulder, but there still is a backup there. Weather, rain this morning, becoming scattered showers afternoon. Scattered evening showers, mostly cloudy tomorrow. I'm at Baxter, KGO Radio News. Ron Owens, KGO Radio. The article was public, private sectors aren't the same. It was in the Cron. David Crane, he wrote it. He's here. He's talking about it. 8080810. Tell me what you think. Sonoma. Mike, good morning. Morning, Ron. How are you? Good. Um, you know, I've been a union member for 34 years. I'm a UFC um, W worker. I'm a butcher for 34 years. And people, I... You know, the public union or uh, the public sectors unions are totally different from the private. The private, you know, DMV, all those guys, um, uh, cops, firemen, they shouldn't call themselves unions. Over 30 years ago, they weren't unions. And over the years, it, it has, um, um, they, over the years, little by little, they've called themselves unions. They don't collective bargaining the way I do. They, they don't have trust funds like my union does. My union negotiates a contract and then they put the money per hour into a trust fund. And that's where the company and the union trustees, they manage the money, they invest it. Our trust fund, I think we have uh, $3, $3 billion in it for retirement. Our medical, we have something like uh, 3 or $4 billion in it. That That is trusted, managed, and then um, just dispersed to the union members as needed. 
Every four years, I go under a contract negotiations. At that time, they can either uh, increase or uh, decrease how, I, how much I make an hour, how much they're going to contribute to my medical, and so on. By, by these um, public or private or public employees calling themselves union, like this gentleman was talking about, they don't have trust funds. So everything is just promised, nothing put in, into dollars into the bank. All right, your reaction to that? Actually, it, it's a it's a very poignant point uh, that the caller made. Uh, it's and it's absolutely right. Pension and retiree health care promises, for example, with the state are promises. So, for example, there are state pension funds, and the state and employees contribute money to those pension funds in order to help meet those pension promises in the future. But if those pension funds were to lose every penny tomorrow, which they're not, but if they were to lose every penny tomorrow. The only people in the state not adversely affected are state pensioners because they have a hell or high water undertaking from the taxpayers of the state of California, as opposed to the private sector where they really are looking to their pension funds to provide look, uh, their returns. Look at look at Madison, Wisconsin. Now the concessions suddenly come out and, okay, we'll pay a little bit but when it comes to our health care. We'll pay more than we're paying. We'll pay a little bit more. All right, we'll put money in as far as – the benefits are concerned, but the irony is they're still below public. Uh, public lawyers are still below the private in terms of the amount that, that they're paying. Oh yeah, well, actually, what you really want to look at is the relationship between the amount they're paying and the amount that they will be receiving. Right. So the, the uh, and and in fact, some of the studies that were done um, uh, incorrectly report this when they compare public sector and private sector compensation. The only figure they include for the public sector compensation benefit size. Right. Uh, Benefits-wise, is just the upfront contribution. What they leave out is the state's liability for all the deficiencies. So, for example, the state will – the upfront contribution now is like 8 percent when the real cost of the state is closer to 30 percent. The other thing I just want to point out, Ron, is I didn't know any of this until I got into the state government in, in 2003 uh, after Governor Schwarzenegger was elected. And I'm a lifelong Democrat. I learned this in 2006 from a private sector union employee – who's the one who brought up this difference uh, in 1978 when California created collective bargaining for public employees. Right. He said that was a dark day for the private labor sector because at that point people then always conflated public union needs with private union needs, and they're very different. Like the gentleman that just called, he needs the economy to grow and the pie to grow in order for his for him to flourish, whereas public sector employees at the state level at least don't need that to happen. And as Jared was talking during the break, we were discussing this, too. You want a classic, even level playing field thing? Look at the NFL strike right now. you got rich owners. you got rich players. That makes sense. They yeah. both have an interest. There's a logic to it. There's not a logic when it comes to public employees, certainly not the same logic. Uh, Scott, calling from San Francisco. Welcome to KGO. Ron Owens, David Crane. Good morning, gentlemen. Um, I guess it's a question I was just thinking that spawned off of the last answer. Um, the last caller said, you know, there's, a, there's dollars put aside. They're not just promissory notes. I know that the state of California or the federal government, per se, there's, there's a no bankruptcy clause. They can't, like, cities can file bankruptcy when they don't have money. But I guess my question is, comparing the private sector to the state or local governments, when private unions or private companies or private anything run out of money and they, don't, and they can't pay people, they can't pay them. But my question is, for, for, for public pensions and public health care for the next, you know, people that are retiring now, the baby boomers that are retiring now, are going to be alive another 35, 40 years. What happens when the state just runs out of money yeah. and, we can't, and, and we're not, we, we can't afford to have the fire, you know, the fire hydrants from yeah. spewing water? Totally what legitimate question. Yeah, this... Uh, uh, Scott, the, the, the difference is the state will not run out of money. Let me just explain this. So uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the state uh, only has a, a small amount of, of mandatory payments. So, for example, this year the state will raise $90 billion in revenue in its general fund, and it's contractually and constitutionally required to spend only $50 billion of that, including on all these retirement benefit costs. The other $40 billion is appropriated by the legislature uh, year in and year out. What do you mean appropriate? In other words, for example, the legislature gets together with Governor Brown and they decide on a budget. And that's why, for example, they're saying this year, higher education will get, instead of last year, 
Under Governor Schwarzenegger, they got six billion. This year, Governor Brown is proposing it to be five billion dollars, right. a billion dollar cut, effectively. Um, and uh, so, what happens is, who takes it on the chin as these retirement benefit costs go up? Are programs like higher ed, health and human services, where, where the state spends about thirty billion dollars a year? Increasingly, you see cuts in programs that are social services. So it's not as if the state runs out of money. These programs get shorted. But I, I, I'm still a bit confused. If it's not, what the ninety billion and the and the fifty billion, the ninety billion. So think about it this way: in your, uh, where's your, the ninety billion come from? Those are tax revenues. Okay, so we get the state takes in ninety billion, right? And then it's only required by law mm-hmm. to spend about fifty billion. It's got to spend about thirty six to. So where's the other forty billion? In other words, it takes in ninety billion dollars. Right. It's required under the Constitution to service debt, general obligation bond right. debt. That's five and a half billion dollars this year. It's required to make all the retirement benefit payments that Scott mm-hmm. was just referring to. That's seven billion dollars this year, and it's required under Proposition ninety eight to pay for K through fourteen education. Right. That's about thirty six to forty billion dollars. Everything else, the legislature can decide how much do they want to allocate. So that's why this year they're saying. There isn't as much money to go around. There's only only forty billion to spend among health and human services, corrections, higher education, environmental protection, parks and recreation, etc. That's where the battle is. They're the ones that take it on the chin. And it's not that the state runs out of money. Those programs just end up with less. So they're battling with the smaller piece of the pie. That's right. Eight oh eight oh eight ten is the number. Eight oh eight oh eight ten. He's David Crane. I'm Ron Owens. KGO ten twenty eight. This is Randy Mancini of Mancini Sleep World, inviting you to rest easy during our tax-free mattress sale. This is our way of saying thank you for making Mancini Sleep World the best place to buy a mattress. I toss and turn at night. It's because my mattress is too old? Well, it's either your mattress is too old or your needs have changed. When shopping for a new mattress, look for something that reduces the pressure at your shoulders and hips. This should help you stop the tossing and turning throughout the night. Firm or soft or plush or... Which one's best for me? You know, it really depends on how you sleep. Side sleepers will enjoy a soft mattress, while back sleepers will prefer something a little on the firmer side. Our mattress specialists will help you find the perfect mattress. I'm on a really tight budget. Can I still afford a quality mattress? We've got a huge selection of mattresses that will fit anyone's budget. You can get a great night's sleep and rest easy with huge savings. Come on in. See what we can do for you. Fabulous. I feel better already. Mancini Sleep World. Call 1-800-64-SLEEP or visit sleepworld.com and start sleeping better tonight. That's the place to go. Hi, can I help you? Can you answer a question? This is the drive-up teller, sir. It's a banking question. Go ahead. You do loans? Yes. 18 months? Yes. No interest? No. Doggone it. How do they do it? How does who do it, sir? S&G Carpet. This month, S&G will install any flooring now, and I don't have to pay any interest for 18 months. Carpeting? Yes. Laminate? Yes. Hardwood yes. Vinyl, yes. Tile? Yes. 18 months, no interest? No interest for 18 months. I don't know how they do it. Can I speak to your manager? Mr. Is he in? Yeah. You had a question. How does S&G Carpet offer no interest for 18 months? They charge more than the other guys. No, they beat any written estimate by 10%. On carpet? Yes. Laminate? Yes. Hardwood? Yes, final, yes, final. yes. 18 months, no interest. No. Yes? Y- uh, yes. No. Yeah. Yes. yes. No. no. Yes. Well, you know what I mean. Yes, with your good credit, S&G Carpet will install any carpet, laminate, hardwood, vinyl, or tile so you can enjoy it now and pay no interest if paid in full within 18 months. Plus, S&G will beat any written estimate by 10%. S- in Albert and Pleasanton and Santa Clara or on the web at sgcarpet.com. Expires 331.11. This hour is brought to you in part by Les Schwab Tire Centers. You know that little voice that always tells you, watch the budget? Listen to it at the Les Schwab Spring Tire Sale, the time when Les Schwab puts their most popular tires on sale. Happening right now at your Les Schwab Tire Center. Worrying about your financial life is the only natural thing to do. It's nice to have some help sorting all of that out. So if you need help, Greg O'Donnell is your man. Greg is an independent financial advisor. Greg's not obligated to any particular investment, carrier, or institution. Thinking about investments and how they should be allocated, reading financial reports, and wondering when to buy and what to buy is just not much fun. So why not leave all that sort of planning to Greg O'Donnell and his team? They'll be honored to provide a complimentary consultation for you at no cost or obligation. As Greg often says, planning is a process, not a product. Call the local guy. Guy. Greg O'Donnell now at 866-496-2300. That's 866-496-2300 or visit him online at O'DonnellFinancialGroup.com. Securities and advisory services offered through Financial Telesis Inc., member FINRA and SIPC, a registered investment advisor. 
I just saved on my favorite. Diapers. So I bought my baby a new... Chainsaw. And they marked down the best nail. Polish. Two for the price of one. People love to talk about great deals. And if you talk to your neighbors, some of them are bound to tell you about State Farm. Thanks to discounts of up to 40%, switching to State Farm could save you hundreds. No wonder 40 million drivers trust State Farm. That's more drivers than Geico and Progressive combined. So ask a neighbor, then go to discountdoublecheck.com or call 1-800-STATE-FARM. Discount percentage and availability may vary by state. Xfinity reinvents entertainment so you can enjoy it your way. Did you know that you can find something to watch easier than ever? Enjoy the new expanded search feature with your on-screen program guide. Now you can find shows on TV or on demand. Just select the search button on the main menu or quick menu. You can search by title or even by actor's or director's name. It's another reason why you can watch Xfinity TV your way wherever and whenever you choose. Access your services in convenient and imaginative ways. See who's calling you on your TV, check voicemail from your computer, program your DVR service from your smartphone, and turn your iPad, iPhone, or iPod Touch into your remote control with the new Xfinity TV app coming soon to Android. With TV, voice, and Internet services that work together seamlessly, you're free to access everything you love anytime, anywhere, and any way you want. See and experience the Xfinity difference yourself. Comcast is so sure you'll love everything about it. It stands behind each one of its services with a full 30-day money-back guarantee. Call 800-XFINITY today. Because sometimes three hours just isn't enough. The Ron Owens Program continues 24-7 on Facebook.com slash Ron Owens. And now Grocery Outlet presents Thoughts from Mile 3. Have you ever wondered, what do dogs dream about when they sleep? No? Yes? A little? Well, based on the fact that my dog twitches around like he's all goofy about something when he's sleeping, my guess is that he's dreaming about all the great deals you can find at Grocery Outlet. All those big brands, all those little prices. But alas, that's not a dream, dog or otherwise. Because every day there are great deals at Grocery Outlet. Right now, navel oranges, an eight-pound bag is just $3.99. Plus, this amazing deal on wine. Right now, a 750-milliliter bottle of Cundy Estate Syrah is just $4.99. I mean... If I were a dog, I can't imagine I'd dream of anything else. Well, okay, maybe I'd dream about chasing after squirrels made out of bacon, but hey, who doesn't have that dream, right? Grocery Outlet, Bargain Market. Grocery Outlet, Bargain Market. Each family run and independently operated. Go to GroceryOutlet.com or call 888-BARGAIN for the store nearest you. Ron Owens, KGO Radio in the studio. It's David Crane. His article was public-private sectors are not the same. He was an advisor to Governor Schwarzenegger, but he's also a Democrat. Lectures on public policy at Stanford. He's on the UC Board of Regents. Interesting that there are a lot of people online who are worried. And the worry, I mean, there's the phrase of union busting, and I want to talk about that. But what they're basically saying is, all right, even if you're making sense when it comes to private unions versus public unions, if they are now dumping on the public unions, they're going to dump on the private unions next. They're going to break up the private unions. We're all going to suffer. Big management's going to win. The average worker's going to lose. Where's the distinction? I think it's exactly the opposite for the reason that the first caller made. You know, the first caller, uh, I forget his name now, it talked about how he's in a union. He's a, he's a, he's a meat cutter. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a butcher. He's a butcher. Uh, and he said they should, the public union shouldn't even be allowed to call their organizations unions. They are completely different animals that use the very same name. I think what happens is exactly the opposite, and I think it's happening right now in New York, where Governor Cuomo is teaming up with private sector unions who have realized that it's their ox that is being gored by all these increasing costs at the state level. So, for example, construction unions that rely upon big infrastructure projects at the state are finding out there's less money for infrastructure projects because instead of servicing infrastructure debt, the money is going to service public sector retirement benefit right. benefit debt. So I think you're 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 uh, and, and that as I mentioned earlier, the person who brought this to my attention was a private sector union guy who thought it was a dark day for them when people started to conflate these public sector and private sector uh, motives. I, I address the union busting aspect of it though, because that's the big rally cry in Madison, Wisconsin. You got all these different unions saying, "Look, it's just the first step to dump collective bargaining and to dump unions all together." Do you view what's going on in Madison that way? No, and, but I, and, and I think it's unfortunate that people haven't realized this difference. And I think it, it's been hurt by, for example, I think it's Indiana, where the Indiana uh, legislature has moved to do almost exactly that, where they want to make it a right-to-work state. 
and strip collective bargaining rights uh, from the private sector. I think that's a that's nonsense and a mistake. Ray in Santa Rosa, David Crane, Ron Owens, KGO. Good morning. Oh, hi, David and Ron. Excellent topic. Uh, you know, I'm I'm a little bit surprised that you would be uh, uh, confused about the you know the John Stewarts and and the Rachel Maddows and the Pat Thurston, who's really a narrow-minded le- uh, extremist. Uh, uh, because they keep saying the same things. This is a horrible assault on the middle class. Uh, it's union busting. And the worst thing that they say, and, and you just touched on it, is these supposed studies, you know, statistics and liars, where they say that the uh, public employees make comparable or less than their private counterparts, whereas Willie Brown has said, no, they're overpaid. I happen to know uh, a uh, state employee who says that you can actually retire in your 50s and get 90 percent. You're absolutely right on that. And by the way, Willie acknowledges that. He takes the blame. He said, I negotiated some of these contracts. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, the, the studies that have been done recently are, are very disappointing from some, some august organizations that have compared public sector pay and private sector pay and left out the benefits portion of the public sector pay, or they've diminished the size of those. But again, I want to be careful here. I don't think – I think it's very dangerous to villainize public employees. I've met with public employees who tell me they're almost afraid to tell people what they do now, which is completely wrong because these are public servants doing very important work. It's the politicians who made the promises and make the promises and don't fund them, and then they're not there when the consequences are suffering. And I'm telling you, for example, uh, to me the greatest sin – it took place in 1999 in California when very smart people – uh, you know, the state treasurer, the state controller, and and uh, state officials countenanced what was effectively the issuance of $200 billion worth of debt by doing a massive retroactive and prospective pension increase and telling taxpayers it wouldn't cost a dime and telling people that they wouldn't have to contribute any, mu- any more money to meet these promises simply by saying, don't worry, the stock market will take care of it forever. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think they were disingenuous at that time. I think they really bought into that. I don't know. I, you know, at the very same time they were doing – anybody who knows any history, uh, financial history in the United States, in fact, the financial history of the world knows that the era from 1982 to 1999 was unparalleled in human history. And Paul Volcker gets the credit for that. Not to digress too much, but it's large and, – and actually so does Jimmy Carter – it's a lot. Lo- I know you, you probably can, don't like you cannot, that. You cannot praise Jimmy Carter. Well, on the I'm show. So, That's the I, only rule. I'm sorry. All right, but it was Jimmy Carter who named Paul Volcker to the Fed, and and Paul Volcker, you know, saved the economy by, by crushing inflation. And just the drop in interest rates from 1982, you may remember, you know, the prime rate was like 21 percent, mm-hmm. down to the levels they hit in 1999. Just that anchor being lifted from the U.S. economy had an enormous impact. All I want to say is, anybody who knew anything knew in 1999 that that boom in the 1990s was not consistent with, with economic history. Wouldn't it be great to go back to the economic days of Jimmy Carter? Uh, inflation <laughs> was what percentage? Anyway, 808 is the number. David Crane, Ron Owens, KGO. A look at news. Here's Linda Menes. Thank you, Ron. The Air Force confirms two airmen have been killed, two were wounded after a gunman opened fire on their bus outside Frankfurt's airport. German police have the suspect in custody, a Kosovo citizen. Steve Jobs launched the Apple iPod 2 himself, that's the iPad 2 himself, coming off medical leave to do so. He walked on stage to a standing ovation. The new iPad will go for between $499 and $829. It goes on sale March 11th. The latest snow survey in the Sierra found the snow packs water contents at 124% of normal. The Department of Water Resources says that means it'll be able to deliver at least 60% of water requested by cities and farmers, more if the storms continue. And an Atherton school teacher has been placed on leave for rattling a table to get the attention of his math students. A Shelby Lane 8th grade girl, who says she was startled, used her cell phone to call police. Police say other students in the class weren't bothered by the table rattling. Checking traffic now, we've got an accident or a major problem working in Nevada 101 southbound between 37 and Nevada Boulevard and Freitas Parkway. There are long delays there because of an earlier problem with the big rig. We heard all about that in Morning Drive. 
And we have a stall on the San Mateo Bridge, 92 westbound at Midspan. Uh, there's a disabled uh, vehicle there. Bridge crews are on the scene, so keep your eyes peeled. It's going to be a wet one today. Rainy this morning. Scattered showers this afternoon with highs in the 50s. Cloudy with scattered showers overnight and lows in the 40s. And some light scattered showers tomorrow. It's 55 in San Jose and San Francisco on your radio. It's always 810. KGO News Talk 810. I'm Lynn Jimenez. KGO Radio News. Dave Ross here. People often ask me, what's so different about the duck's bed? I think it's a fair question because picking a new mattress from hundreds if not thousands of mattresses available, that can be downright scary. And it could be a choice you're going to live with for a long time. My back hurts just thinking about it. Well, I have two words for you. Contour and support. The duck's bed contours to your body. It's designed to allow your shoulders and hips to sink in like no other bed in the world. Second, it supports your body dynamically by pushing back where and when you need support. Not too much, just enough. It's a remarkable combination that you just won't find anywhere else. And they've been making the Ducks bed for 85 years with stores all over the world. Don't let another year go by without feeling the Ducks difference. Find them at Duxiana stores in San Francisco, San Rafael, Walnut Creek, and Palo Alto. Visit Ducks.com. That's D-U-X.com. Or call 800-595-2000. 800-595-2000. Ducks, the bed for life. So a couple of years ago, I mentioned to a friend that we were buying a home for my mother. Oh, Bill and I were up to our ears in work at the time, and we had questions about the mortgage. It was just all getting so complicated. Call First Republic, my friend said. I love that bank. Well, <laughs> love is a pretty strong word, and I'd never heard it used regarding a bank. So I called First Republic. Well, they arranged the whole thing in a couple of days, and my personal banker even came to my office so I could sign the papers. Well, I was so impressed that I eventually moved all our banking over to First Republic. And now I'm the one singing the praises of First Republic to friends, acquaintances, (laughs) hairstylists. I mean, it's like letting someone in on a really great book or a hot new restaurant. You just know they'll never be disappointed. Personal banking, business banking, private wealth management. At First Republic, it's a privilege to serve you. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Are you currently being treated for a relapsing form of multiple sclerosis? A research study is currently being conducted in your area to investigate the safety and tolerability of an FDA-approved oral medication for relapsing forms of multiple sclerosis. If you are between the ages of 18 and 65, have been diagnosed with a relapsing form of multiple sclerosis, and have taken medication to control your MS symptoms for six months or longer, you may qualify to participate in this study. Qualified participants will receive study-related exams and study medication at no cost. For more information or to see if you may qualify, call 925-930-7267. That number again is 925-930-7267. That's 925-930-7267. You ask, therefore he answers. Your legal issue crystallized by Len Tilla, starting at 103 on KGO News Talk 810. Give up ice cream? That's what a lot of folks are doing once they taste Mountain High Yogurt. This Colorado treat's been the best-selling family-sized yogurt in San Francisco for years. Look for it at your local grocer. It's in the blue container. All natural, incredibly smooth and creamy Mountain High Yogurt is never too sweet, never sour or bitter. They don't use artificial sweeteners, colors or flavors. No high fructose corn syrup, no gelatin or cornstarch either. Mountain High Yogurt is filled with live, active and probiotic cultures that maintain your digestive health and overall immunity. In the morning, blend it with fruit and juice to make a smoothie. In the evening, mix Mountain High with fresh fruit, nuts, even chocolate, and freeze it for 30 minutes to create a refreshing, low-fat dessert. Visit MountainHighYogurt.com to find hundreds of healthy recipes. And here's the tip of the week. Strain Mountain High Yogurt in cheesecloth overnight to make your own Greek-style yogurt. When you've had enough driving for one day, there's always a Motel 6 nearby. You always get a clean, comfortable room for the lowest price of any national chain. Motel 6. They'll leave the light on for you. What do you put your heart into? Your job? Your family? Your favorite charity? 
At El Camino Hospital, we put our heart into caring for yours. From a robust clinical trials program to an exceptionally collaborative approach to patient care, our Heart and Vascular Institute explores every possible way to bring you the best care. You can get an overview of our most cutting-edge innovations in our latest Innovations in Healthcare video. Learn about new, minimally invasive heart valve repairs that eliminate the need for open surgery. Discover leading-edge software that could reduce the number of angiograms performed nationally each year by half. See how EMTs transmit EKG information directly from the field so our emergency cardiac team can be ready for heart attack patients before the ambulance even arrives. And find out how our Genomic Institute brings personalized care to the treatment of genetic heart disease. All examples of how we take your health to heart. To learn more, watch our video at ElCaminoInnovates.org. That's ElCaminoInnovates.org. Hi, it's Gil Gross, and I want you to go to KGORadio.com and sign up for the Listener Club for your chance to win tickets to the Bay Area Golf Show at the Santa Clara Convention Center, March 11th through 13th, and a round of golf for you and your buddies at the Spring Valley Golf Course in Milpitas. Listen to me every weekday afternoon at 2.40 and see if I call out your name. Now, only KGO Listener Club members can win, so I want you to join now at KGORadio.com. Ron Owens, KGO Radio. Wisconsin is battling over the rights of labor. The issues, of course, involve public versus private unions. That's what we're talking about with David Crane. Jim in Oakland, Ron Owens, KGO. Thanks for waiting. Hey, Ron, David, uh, thanks for the show. I, there is a night and day difference between uh, public and private, and I think it boils down to accountability. In a private company, let's say Ford, uh, you know, negotiators from the company are, are very concerned, very motivated about the contracts that they agree to in collective bargaining because they know that the company is at stake, that the, the financial health of the company is at stake. Their jobs are at stake. If they negotiated a, a poor union contract, they could lose their job. Personally, they could lose their job. With a, an employee, a, a public employee union, it's quite different. It, uh, the, the mediators and the negotiators for the state are usually appointed by a, uh, uh, a, a politician who is often accepts uh, campaign donations from uh, uh, for, from an electorate that uh, is supportive of his cause and special interests that are supportive of his cause, and he's not around. Uh, you know, like Willie Brown said, he's not around for the consequences when when we have to pay the piper. And in terms of look, uh, here's the story that I got. It took the L.A. school district five years at a cost of three and a half million dollars to fire six teachers for poor performance. It's just, our, our money is just, it's ridiculous because the politicians obviously want to be able to get reelected. To do that, you go, you need the union support. Yeah, that's the lethal combination of civil service protections and collective bargaining rights that really works to the disinterest of citizens and taxpayers. Back to the phones with Pat in Hercules. Hey, Pat, welcome to KGO. Hi, hi, Ron. I'm a frequent listener and caller, and I think I'm like you on this issue in the sense that. I'm the middle ground because for years, since 78 when I left college, I worked in the private sector in benefits work for a major corporation here in San Francisco. I went to law school. I became a lawyer in 88. I always worked in the private sector until 2007 when I came to work for the state, and I have a pretty regular commute to Sacramento from Hercules every day. So I think I have both sides, okay? And I just want to say that I had to pull over in Dixon and call because the power of public unions is so overstated. First of all, I'm in a union as an attorney with administrative law judges. We are still on furlough going on two years now uh, to the tune of about 15% pay reduction. Granted, I make a pretty good salary, and so don't wait for my 15% pay reduction, some people could say. But the bottom line is, my so-called union, which is uh, the union that represents lawyers and administrative law judges, do such a fantastic job of negotiating for us that 50% of the lawyers in the union were never on furlough because of the agencies they were in while I've been on furlough for two years. So what's your point, addition, succinctly? Succinctly, Pat, what's well, your here's point? My, here's my point. I am a public employee, but I'm also a taxpayer. So I'm not costing taxpayers more than I'm costing myself. I pay taxes as a private sector when I was in private sector. Yeah, but you're also negotiating with yourself. I don't, I don't, 
negotiate, though. We have these so-called unions that do not have anywhere near the power that many of the private unions have. And more importantly, because I used to negotiate with those private unions, by the way, but most importantly, what people perceive as the power of public unions is generally the safety unions, the firefighters, the police, the correctional officers. Those are the people who can retire at 50 with uh, 90% of their pay. The average working stiff for the state or local government does not have those kind of benefits. Yeah, we, we, which we talked about, but she's absolutely right on police fire and the like. And and uh, and she's absolutely right that the attorneys union at the state doesn't have any. I didn't know attorneys had a union. Yeah, and the engineers do, and others. The engineers actually have have uh, shown a lot of power when it comes to. Uh, I mean, is the bar association the union, or do they have a union? No, it, I mean these are state attorneys. So lawyers on strike. It, uh, I guess that's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, but uh, they don't have the same amount of power that, for example, the California Teachers Association does. Sure. I mean, the last 10 years, just two unions have given $300 million to California elections. But I would point out they still have enough bargaining power. Uh, you know, uh, Pat has suffered the consequences of, of furlough and a 15 percent pay reduction. But the private sector suffered a seven, not only a pay reduction and not only a massive reduction in their retirement benefits, but they also suffered a massive loss of jobs. 7.7 absolute percentage points of Americans lost their jobs. That hasn't been the case in the public sector. And they benefit from uh, civil service protections and collective bargaining in, in achieving that outcome. Interesting. You mentioned the CTA. And David Sanchez, really good guy, head of the CTA. Uh, Tom Torlakson is now the superintendent of public instruction. He's going to be on in a week or two. That I, I don't know him. But the irony is, during the campaign, ad after ad after ad for Torlakson, from the CTA, you got to say to yourself, well, obviously, the CTA wants him because they're gonna, he's going to be the most generous to them. That's the way it works. I think that's what uh, generally happens with state superintendent races, but really all the powers in the legislature. You really got to keep focused on the 120 state legislators, the governor, and really the controller and the treasurer, too, because they're the ones who publish the financial statements and either tell the truth or don't tell the truth about the real finances. In Belmont, Greg, good morning and welcome. Hey, Ron. Uh, just First of all, I've been listening to you since the very beginning and never called. Um, I belong to a construction union, and our pension, just to say, uh, add to what the butcher said, our pension is funded by the employer's contributions and also contributions from us. And the private pensions have to pass a stress test imposed by, guess who, the government. Uh, it's a complicated formula of employees divided by, by retirees, by future retirees. And you have to have an 85% existing threshold of funding. If it falls below that, changes have to be made to the funding or the benefits. For example, we just had to have a massive infusion of cash into our own pension fund because it fell below the government-mandated threshold, which meant no raises for a few years, reduced benefits. And if you, if you don't do this, the plan could actually go insolvent and be wiped out, like the Steelworkers Union, uh, you know, et cetera. Um, and my feeling is, I've been following this for about 15 years, anybody would listen, I think all the cities and counties are going to go bankrupt because of this. Your guest said the states can't go bankrupt. He's correct, but the cities and counties can. Uh, yeah, the cities and counties can go bankrupt, and some of them uh, have, as you know, Vallejo has. And and the cities and counties are much closer to the edge. They don't have that big cushion that I mentioned at the state level. So you start to see an erosion in public services faster there. But you said something which is critical to this whole discussion. The accounting of these pension obligations is very different in the government than it is in the private sector. You pointed out one of them, which is the stress test. There's another, which will make your eyes glaze over, which has to do with the discount rate. But effectively, at the state the state, uh, and this is not just California, all states and local governments have for decades now been able to hide both the true size of the liabilities and the true well-being or non-well-being of those pension funds. Does, anybody really, back to does anybody really know? I mean, Washington, the Washington Post said uh, states face a combined $555 billion in unfunded public health coverage liabilities. Is that number accurate? That one might be pretty close. Actually, this will bore, this will make your eyes glaze over as well. Retiree health care accounting is better than pension accounting. And so the $555 billion figure nationwide for state and local governments on retiree health care is closer to reality than is what is reported for pensions, where it's much larger than is officially reported. David, look, we, we got a couple of minutes. Explain to us so we get it. Look, I look at Wisconsin and underlying everything, the Milwaukee Journal, which is their big thing, they said it best. The state's broke. It's a real crisis. You got to do something. 
you can't just sit there and, and keep the current system. Now people say, well, yeah, they've made some concessions as far as Wisconsin is concerned, and the public employees kind of get it. What about the rest of the country? Are, are we getting this or not? Because we're all going broke. I, I don't know, but I can tell you more and more people are starting to realize that there's something wrong in a world where people can negotiate with themselves and where they don't need the same protections that the private sector has. I, you know, this is really just all about a, le- a level playing field. Public employees should have the same rights that private union workers have. They shouldn't have more and they shouldn't have less. I think the world is starting to understand that. Well, what do you mean by the rights, though? Well, for example, uh, these callers who have called in have the right to collectively bargain. Sure. You know, the butcher and, and uh, the construction guy, they all have the right to collectively bargain. I personally happen to think that's a good thing. But they don't have also civil service protections, and they don't have the ability to control the management they negotiate with. It ought to be the same way in the public sector. People should have the right to collectively bargain if they want, but they shouldn't have these extra powerful rights to retain their jobs no matter what. And they should not be able to control the managers who enter into contracts with them. What do you, what do you see for California? Um, I'm a terrible prognosticator about political futures. You know, so uh, so whatever I say, it's it's going to be the other way. I, I think this problem is going to be solved. I think people are going to recognize. Uh, the true size of all these liabilities, I, I, I don't think that we're going to go Wisconsin's route where they start talking about doing away with collective bargaining for state employees. But I do think we're going to address all these financial obligations. David Crane, excellent hour, excellent guest. Thanks for joining